Nowadays, the curta is pretty well known thanks to the internet, but it wasn't always like that. The first time I ever heard of the curta was in this book. I'm not sure if it counts if it's in a book, but I'm going for it. Pattern Recognition is a 2003 book by legendary science fiction author and reluctant futurist William Gibson. It's set in the present day, which is 2002, and the main character, Case Pollard, is a woman on a globe-trotting adventure to track down a reclusive viral video creator, all while struggling to deal with her egomaniac tech bro boss. This book was written before the cultural rise of viral videos and egomaniac tech bros, so chalk up another one for William Gibson's future casting. I really like the book. I read it when it was new 20 years ago, and bits and pieces of it still stick with me. Today's math prop first appears in Chapter 4, Math Grenades. Case is walking early in the morning near the Portobello Road Market in London and comes across three shady guys standing around selling stuff out of their car trunk. Black, compact, cylindrical. Six of them laid out on an old gray sweater amid a jumble of brown cardboard cartons. Case thinks that they're grenades at a glance, but she takes a closer look and one of the guys hands her one. And then she's holding it, heavy, dense, knurled for gripping, tabs or flanges that look as though meant to move in these slots, small round windows showing white numbers. At the top, something that looks like the crank on a pepper mill as executed by a small arms manufacturer. These guys are selling curtas on the street in 2002. Now, I've never seen a guy selling a curta on the street, but there definitely was a community of curta collectors at that time. And before the rise of eBay, people just had to make it work. So I'll allow it. Gibson's description of the curta is a pretty good one. He uses the word knurled twice, which I appreciate. And then the guy actually uses it. He gently takes the thing from her, large fingers moving surely, gently, clicking the black tabs into a different configuration. He grasps the knurled cylinder in his left, gives the handle at the top a twirl, smoothly ratcheting a sum from its interior. Gibson's description of the answer display isn't quite right. He describes it as having small round windows showing white numbers, but the answer windows aren't round. Then he says he raises it to see the resulting figure in a tiny window. A tiny window isn't really how I'd describe it. It is the smallest mechanical calculating machine ever constructed. This certainly isn't literally true, but I guess I know what he means. Case is so stressed out from all her adventures that she has recurring dreams about her father who died at the World Trade Center in the 9-11 attacks. She turns to find him, dressed as she's imagined him to have dressed on that morning his good overcoat open over his business suit, right hand extended, and in it, the black cylinder of a curta calculator. The dead can't help you, and the boy's no good. That's deep, I guess. Actually, I'm not totally sure what he's talking about. We get some more action in Chapter 31, The Prototype. Case needs to bribe a retired NSA spy, so she buys a Curta factory prototype from a high-end collector. She brings one of those three guys from before to make sure it's legit. His fingers slide over it, moving those studs or flanges in their slots or tracks. He pauses, closes his eyes as if listening, and works the little pepper mill crank at the top. It makes a slithering sound, if a mechanism can be said to slither. He opens his eyes, looks at the numbers that have appeared in small circular windows. Yes, he says. We'll take it. Again with the circular windows, but otherwise pretty good. Gibson gives a very insightful bit of future casting when he describes the high-end curta dealer. This guy's got curtas, and he knows they're valuable, but his business is all word of mouth at this point, and a lot of people don't even have any idea what they're worth. The dealer. Last year, he began to go after curtas. The market is not yet entirely rationalized, you see. Values are only just being established for curta calculators. All such markets are being rationalized by the internet, of course eBay. He's very adroit there and has sold many curtis to Americans, always for more than they would fetch here. Global values are being established. Gibson is predicting here that eBay would be used to create a stable market for curtis. You don't have to meet a guy on the street. You don't have to worry about what's a fair price. eBay and the internet are going to turn this weird little thing into a tradable commodity. 
Right again, William. In conclusion, I give pattern recognition by William Gibson my math props rating of good. Thanks for watching and let me know if you see any more.